Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do, as I promised, I've, uh, what I'll do is I'm actually doing a jump tour um, in France. Thank you very much to Mr. Antonio for doing a lot of work to, to help help me out with that. Um, so I've, I'm actually doing um, three different sessions, three or four, maybe three different sessions uh, across a number of different user groups. I was at uh, the Lille. Uh, <laughs> that sounds very funny in English. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, I'm off to Lyon tomorrow, uh, and then Grenoble on Thursday, and Marseille on Friday. And then on Saturday, I fly home and I sleep. Uh, all, all the way through to January. So I'm looking very much forward to that. Um, so what I'll do is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send uh, one email out to everyone. Um, with all the slides, uh, all the reports, which a lot of the, um, they're all free reports, which has a whole bunch more information about what we can fit into, into an hour. Um, and, and I'll send all that information, information about if you wanted to join the virtual jug and things like that. So if you, if you wanted that kind of information, I'll, um, I'll, I'll send this around and if you'd like to put your email address, uh, I'll, send you that, I'll send you that information. Um, right, so this session, <laughs> I, actually, I actually switched the sessions round. Uh, because the class loaders, the class loaders are a little bit heavier on the mind, um, and, and this uh, this app servers report, this app servers uh, session is a little bit more light-hearted. We can have a little bit of fun with this one. Um, there's obviously only so much you can talk about in depth about app servers uh, in an hour, so we're not going to be we're not going to be very very technical in this one. Um, but this all came about because of a report which we wrote about application servers. Um, but specifically from the developer's point of view. So as a developer, which is, which is the app server that I should develop with if I want a new hobby, product, uh, pro hobby project or an enterprise application project? Um, and, it's, and it's based on certain things that a, that a developer is going to be interested in. Uh, so this is me, Simon Maple. Uh, if I haven't uh, informed you before, this is my Twitter handle, <laughs> SJ Maple. I am paid by the followers, so come on, <laughs> at SJ Maple. Uh, zero turnaround are awesome, go buy their products. Right, this is me, used to work at IBM, blah, blah, blah. So that's me. Now I'm going to hear about you guys. I, what I want to know, I'm going to ask you for a show of hands. And I want to know two things. Uh, first of all, which application servers you are using uh, in your, as a developer in your environment. And which, uh, which application servers, or, or which of you that, that are using that application server, are actually your gut feel, are you happy with using that application server? Does it put a smile on your face? So, we're going to start with Tomcat. So please put your hand up if you are Tomcat users. This is hard to gauge. That's it. Wow. Hang on, look. everyone put their hands up. Put, put your hands up if you're not a Tomcat user. That's low detail, that's about 98%. Bloody hell. Right. Uh, Put your hands up if you are not happy with using Tomcat. Pa? What's happy? Pa content. Pa content. <laughs> Avec uh, Tomcat. Okay. That's about 97. Wow. Okay, Jetty. Who, uh, who's using Jetty? You're using two instances of Jetty at the back. You've got a Jetty cluster going on. Okay, it's about 15%. Who's happy with Jetty? Oh, that's sad. <coughs> About 8%. Who's using Glassfish in either variety? About, maybe about 5%. Who's happy with Glassfish? I'm not happy with Oracle, but I'm happy with Yeah, Microsoft. yeah. Uh, who's, happy, uh, who's happy? Who's using Liberty Profile? This is an, I, probably not many. This is, a, this is a new IBM application server. Hey, we've got one person. I'll round that up to 1%. Now, this, is, now this could be bad. Uh, are you happy with the Liberty Profile? <coughs> well, oh, it's faster than WebSphere. My... my <laughs> My, my great-grandmother is faster than WebSphere, come on, you yeah. Okay, one. Uh, I shouldn't say that, 12 years. I loved IBM, to be honest, I do love IBM. Uh, JBoss, who's using JBoss? Oh, good number. 
That's a very good number. I think Antonio's got a farm of servers that he just, he just has every single application. Uh, Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Yeah. <laughs> who's use, who's uh, happy with JBoss? Oh, interesting. Who's using WebSphere? Full edition WebSphere. Okay. Who is happy with WebSphere? <laughs> Why does that get a laugh? Come on. Who is using WebLogic? Wow, very interesting. And who is happy with WebLogic? In purely in development. Okay. <clears throat> Right, interesting results. Oops, I'm in uh, on my keynote. There we go. So this is the audience. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Everyone uses Tomcat. Everyone loves Tomcat. Uh, Jetty, I'm, I'm always surprised when I give this session that Jetty isn't kind of around here. I always thought Jetty had a much, much bigger community. Lots more people uh, would use Jetty. Glassfish, I often see kind of a lot higher as well. Uh, JBoss, I'm, I'm surprised at this as well. Uh, JBoss doesn't have such a drop off normally with, with what people are happy with and what, uh, what people use. Uh, WebSphere and WebLogic, yeah. <laughs> so what, first question, what is an application server? This is a, an interesting question. Uh, there is lots of debate about what is and what isn't an application server. Uh, so to cancel the debate, we have to go to the one oracle that always tells the truth. Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia says that it's the Java EE specification which defines what a Java application server is. So if you if you uh, implement the J2 e, the, J, the Java EE spec, then you are a Java application server. Uh, yeah, whatever Wikipedia. If you <laughs> Jetty is an application server. Of course, it's an application server. You, you host applications which are Java on that server. You'd have Java work running on that server. It, 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 it performs some action on a request. It gives you a response. It's an application server. Anyone disagree with that? You're wrong. Right, these, these are the five application servers which we're going to look at. Tomcat, Jetty, Glassfish, Liberty Profile, and JBoss. Initially, we were going to look at WebSphere and WebLogic as well. Um, but because this is purely a development-focused uh, report. Um, we thought it was a bit, a bit hard on WebSphere and WebLogic to put them in and, and for them to, you know, get really low scores because that's not where, that's not what we're out to do. They're, they're more focused around production than development. So we're going to focus on these, this set of application servers. In hindsight, uh, after looking at them afterwards, and we are going to have a section about them afterwards. Um, WebLogic actually performs very, you know, a lot, lot better than we, than we originally thought in a, in a uh, development environment. But we'll talk about that in a bit. So these are the eight metrics that, that we looked at for the app servers. And for, for the report, we took every single app server uh, and we measured them against each of these metrics. Um, so download and installation. How easy is it to download? How easy is it to install? And how easy is it to get up and running? That's very important because it's kind of like your, you know, your first, the first time you're touching the app server. How easy is it to get used to? Tooling support, very important again. The server configuration, the XML, how easy is it to change? Does it react when you change your XML? Docs and community, again, very, very important. Performance metrics, this is from a developer's point of view only. So what are the developer actions that are, that are very, very typical, and how quick is the server to react? Uh, features, obviously that depends on how much you want to use, and that's going to be different per application. Uh, admin and management UI, what's the, what's the web console like? How easy is it to make changes? Can you make all the changes you want? And of course, cost and licensing. Does it cost as a developer? What are the licensing issues? Do you just click I agree, accept, or is there no license? Is it an assumed license? So these are the metrics, and we're going to talk about download and installation first. And, and like I say, this is this is very very important. Um, you know, download and installation is the is the first time you touch a new server. If you wanted to, if you've never used uh, Glassfish, for example, is it easy to get? If you if you click through too many screens, you're just going to stop and go back to using Tomcat or something like that. So this is very very important for the first contact. And there are three things that are very, very important. Download. 
Is it easy to get to? Is it easy to click that big button that says download now? Once you've got it, what's the archive like? What do developers like to do? They don't want to go through a wizard. They want to unzip, install, and then go. How easy is it to actually get started? How easy is it to deploy your application? How easy is it to start the server even? Um, these are important things. Does size matter? Kind of. Um, it's important for, from a development point of view to have an application server that is small so you can download it quickly. So, you know, take Jetty as an example and Tomcat as well. That, that you can use Jetty and Tomcat uh, embedded inside your application. That's a really, really useful feature. You know, your, your application is the artifact you care about, not the platform. Okay? So, from, from a size matters point of view, yes, it does. But, you know, if you're going to download another 30 meg or another 40 meg, yeah, that doesn't matter. So it doesn't need to be so small that you're actually lacking in other, in other areas. Is it, is it you know, easy to use? Well, we've, we've reduced it so small that it's like 10k to download, but we, you know, we've removed all these features. So it's important to have a good feature subset, um, but, but keeping it uh, a reasonable size. So, okay, now we've downloaded our application. How easy is it to start? Is it, is it very, very, like in this case, you know, we have a button, it's pretty obvious what it does. An infant could do this, like an iPad. Very, very straightforward. Very, very intuitive to use. iPhone. Kids can kids can play. My my son, who is uh, 21 months old now, can unlock my unlock. Well, he did this maybe five months ago. He used to grab my phone. He used to unlock it. He used to get the. I have pictures on my iPhone of when he's like, looking at it, hitting take a picture. I've got pictures of the wall, pictures of his face. <laughs> Kids can use this, right? And it's intuitive. So, take Glassfish as an example. Uh, how many Glassfish users do we have? Okay, not too many. Um, when we looked at Glassfish initially, we've, we've installed it. We go to the bin directory, obviously. That's where our script should be to start our application server. What do we see? Okay, well, it's not going to be package. I don't want to update it. It must, be this, it must be this asadmin thing, okay, asadmin.bat, let's try that. Uh, okay, I've got about 30 pages of, uh, of text, and I can't, find, I can't find how I start this up. This is, this is very, very hard, right? Tomcat, let's take Tomcat as an example. Okay, this isn't Tomcat yet. Let's take Tomcat as an example. You have a start server, was it startserver.sh or catalina.sh if you wanted to use that as well. Really, really obvious as to what to do. This is a video. Uh, we're starting just at the Zero Turnaround website, so it's a, it's a neutral, well not neutral, but it's a, uh, it's a website that doesn't give us a head start. We're going to start it, this is a 20 second video. Let's start by Googling. <laughs> Turn the sound off. <clears throat> okay, so I go at the top, I go to, I Google Tomcat, click on the first link, go to Tomcat 7, <coughs> download my zip. Downloading in my archive down here, boing, downloaded. I automatically unzip that, I grab a terminal, I cd into, the app, I CD into my directory, I hit start server, 20 seconds, and from absolutely nothing on my laptop, I have a running server. I could copy something into the web apps directory for another five seconds, and in, and in 25 seconds, I am hosting an application on my laptop, starting with just Java. Okay, this is what we're talking about with an awesome development experience from download all the way up to installation and, and getting it up and running. I mean, imagine if we imagine if we said you could do something like that 10, 15 years ago, right? <coughs> so scores, <clears throat> Jetty, Tomcat, very very good. Really small, really easy unzip installs. So small you can actually embed them into. And not a lot of people actually know you can do the same with Tomcat as you can Jetty. You can embed Tomcat into your application. Uh, you can run your application, you can you know, kick off your application which, which starts the application server and uses <coughs> that application server to base your app off. Um, JBoss, Liberty Profile, still small. Um, JBoss dropped some points here because it was, it's quite a lot bigger. Lib JBoss, you cannot download the latest version. You have to compile it. Really? There we go, so I'll, I'll do this. <laughs> right. uh, Liberty Profile, dropped a point. What are IBM awesome at? They have lots of lawyers. Um, <laughs> when you download, you have to accept the license agreement. 
When you install, you have to accept the same license fee. As a result, it drops some points for that. Uh, Glassfish drops some points just because of the AS admin uh, part. Uh, it, it, was, it was quite awkward for us to use. Okay, tooling support. What are we talking about when we say tooling support? NetBeans, IntelliJ, and Eclipse. The, the big three. Everyone wants to use... How many Eclipse users have we got? How many IntelliJ users have we got? Keep your hand up if you want to switch from one to the other. Five people? It's, it, this is like a flame war, whether you love Eclipse or whether you love IntelliJ. No one wants to move. <laughs> Simply because there's so much to remember anyway in our jobs, you don't want to, need, you don't want to have to learn the new hotkeys and shortcuts, right? So, one of the things that I really hate is when an external decision, an external influence, makes you change your decision. It happens with JVM languages a lot, for new JVM languages. It happens for application servers as well. So if I want to choose my application server, please don't make that, don't, don't make that a decision. Uh, also affects which IDE I want to select. But it happens. And what, what we're talking about here isn't just, um, isn't just a, a plugin that allows you to click run as, run on server. It's also a whole bunch of other things, like, for example, um, uh, a lot of these will allow you to actually download and install your application service. You don't need to go to any websites. This is really, really valuable as well. Of course, Maven is another important part, one of the most used build tools. Um, there's a lot, and in fact, we found across the board pretty much, um, Maven support is always very, very good for these application servers, for starting, stopping, deploying, all that kind of, all that kind of great stuff. So tooling support, uh, Tomcat, pretty much based on the size of its community, uh, offers, and, and, and the breadth of that community. So in, in that Tomcat community, you're going to have a huge number of IntelliJ users, NetBeans users, Eclipse users, and so on. Um, as a result, typically there are enough people in that community to, to, to push the support of each of the plugins. So Tomcat uh, was very, very good. Uh, JBoss, Glassfish, and IBM, the WT profile, as a result of, of having vendor backing, they typically do a lot of work on tools. Whereas often, apart from something with a huge community, um, the open source world, things like tooling does get left behind. It's more of an after consideration. Whereas, whereas these guys, these vendors, typically, typically have you know, big work items for that, teams that do this kind of thing. Jameson and Glassfish, both very good. Liberty Profile has excellent support on, on Eclipse how, and Maven. However, as soon as you push away from Eclipse, uh, I think it has an IntelliJ plugin, which is very limited, and I don't think the NetBean plugin even exists. Um, so, obviously, IBM's backing for Eclipse. They choose Eclipse and, and Brad's support for that. Uh, Jetty, we found a little bit lacking. Uh, we found some of the older versions weren't getting the attention it needs. Um, not typically as good as, as some of the others. Okay, server config. And what we mean is XML. No DSL here. XML. Typically, what you don't want as a developer is huge reams of XML and configuration. Um, if we take something like the original, the full profile of WebSphere App Server, you'll have many, many directories with many, many configuration files. And it's very hard as a developer to change a specific part or find a specific part and make that change. With the Liberty profile, they've done an absolutely superb job with server config. Uh, the Liberty Profile is based on a new OSGI kernel, and as a result, uh, your, your XML starts off as seven lines, seven lines of, of, of configuration. Everything is by default, it's, it's convention over config. What you can do is, it's so dynamic, what you can do is you can say, my application only needs JSPs, I'm going to add a line that says, I want JSPs in my server. If at runtime I say, actually now what I want, I want some blueprint or I want some JDBC work, you can add a new feature line which says, add some JDBC work for me, and at runtime, live on the runtime, it'll push that, it'll push that functionality into the server and make it available for the application. So pretty much everything in, in, in the new Liberty Profile edition 
is so dynamic that as you make the change, it's instant. So I, I would really, really recommend having a look at that. Just have a download, have a play, see what you can do with it. It's, it's really based around the application, and I think this is going to be something that goes forward a lot, lot more. When you typically think about application servers and a deployment, um, you think, I'm going to put my platform first and then base my applications on it. And it's entirely the wrong way of thinking. We need to be more application-centric and application-focused. We want to say, this is my application. What are the needs of my application? And build my platform around my application. And this is the kind of thing which the Liberty Profile offers. So the Liberty Profile's result is, is top. Um, behind that, we found Jetty, JBoss, and Tomcat. They were they were they were good for their manipulators for, for their for their sizes. I think uh, JBoss might have been slightly bigger, but not too bad. That they were bigger, um, and they were reasonably reactive to as and when you made your config changes. Um, Glassfish less so reactive on that. Um, so so we dropped that. Perhaps that was a little bit harsh on uh, on Glassfish. Okay, docs and community, a very, very important part. Because when we have problems, we don't want to be the only person in the world having that problem. You need a community to, to feel your pain when you have an exception and help you out. With the docs and community, whichever your application server, you all have one resource, which is which is better than anything on the interwebs. You start at Google. That's, that's where you go, typically. Why? Because you've got a couple of places to go. Community or vendor documentation. Vendor documentation is good, but it's kind of more ideal world. Uh, from Google, you will find actual experiences from Stack Overflow um, and a whole bunch of other places of people who have had problems. I'm doing this, I can't, I'm getting this exception, what do I do about it? Other people will say, yeah, I'm doing this as well. This is the problem I had, exactly the same, this is what I would do. The problem of not having a large community is, and this has happened to me many times, and it's very, very frustrating. The problem with not having a large community is when you do something, whether it's an edge case or not, and you Google something, say this is what's going wrong, you could often find a forum with someone else who had exactly the same problem 10 years ago. <laughs> and then the only person that's like, 2003, I had this problem, I don't know what I do. And you're looking at it thinking, that's my stack trace. <laughs> but no one has responded, and that's the only thing I can find on the internet. Uh, what did you do? And, and that's it. You have no answer at all. So it's really, really important that as well as having your vendor documentation, your application server documentation. It's so important to have this community backing because they're gonna, on the right hand side here, we have a cookbook, right? This is what you do, these are the ingredients, this is how it will work, everything's great. <laughs> this, when the shit hits the fan, <laughs> these people are gonna tell you how to actually do it, what the experiences are, right? Not what some developer had 10 minutes to, to write up and, and it will never be looked at again after other things get released. This is where the importance is. <coughs> As a result, Tomcat, again, the size of the community really, really matters. It's very, very rare that a Tomcat post on a forum will go three seconds without someone writing a page-long response, right? It's, it's really reactive. And there are huge numbers of people in, this, in these communities that have done the same thing. Um, JBoss, they have really, really good um, quick starts, actually. Um, so, you know, similar to what we were saying with that vendor support, if you want to do this with JPA, ah, this is how you can do it. Here's a tutorial, here's a video. They were really, really good. And, and JBoss have a, a good sized community. The web, the web sphere community, um, this is an awesome community created by someone who knows what they're doing. It, it was wasdev.net, I created it like two years ago or something. Um, it, it's, they're, 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 they're currently doing a whole bunch of similar things to, to JBoss in terms of, you know, these are the cookbook style things. Um, the only thing that's lacking is that, is that real community behind it, right? That, that large group of people who say, yeah, this is what we're doing, these are my experiences. 
Uh, glassfish, yeah, it's got a reasonable community. Um, Jetty, we found a lot of the decks <coughs> on the interwebs to be quite stale, actually. Um, and I guess when we look back at that previous um, uh, diagram to show how many people were actually using Jetty in the room, the community seems to have maybe dropped slightly. Hey, we get some fun. Performance metrics. This is always good. So, what a developer thinks. What does a developer want to do? Okay, a developer doesn't care about throughput. A developer doesn't care about how many transactions they can pass through a second, unless unless that's what they're doing, I guess. But what a developer cares about is how quick is my server going to start up? How quick am I going to install this? How quick is it? Is something going to initialize? So I did some tests just on my MacBook Pro, uh, MacBook Pro dual core, I think, eight gig of RAM, about two point three gigahertz chips. Um, so empty server startup time, just a clean server. Two seconds, Tom, uh, Liberty Profile two seconds, Tomcat two seconds, Glassfish two and a half seconds on top of that, Jetty a couple of seconds on top, JBoss one second on top. Right? We're talking like four and a half seconds as the, as the slowest version. Right? If you care about the difference between two seconds and two and a half seconds, right, you've got nothing to care about. Right? This is, these, are all, these are all lightning fast servers. Look at the startup time with Pet Clinic installed. Hey, Pet Clinic. Okay, so startup time with Pet Clinic installed. Reasonable. Um, Liberty Profile, extremely fast. Two and a half seconds. Um, everything else between three and a half to eight and a half seconds. And that this is really surprising. Jetty being the slowest server for, for starting up with, with uh, Pet Clinic installed. Um, server restart, a stop start. Not really that different, adding about a couple of seconds <coughs> each. Uh, Jenkins, we did a Jenkins app, which is around 50 meg uh, size, so it's a, a fairly bigger application to, uh, to the pet clinic, still a web app. Uh, Liberty Profile again, extremely fast, uh, beating the competition substantially. What about deploying? You deploy, you redeploy very, very frequently. Uh, pet clinic. One second on the Liberty Profile. Jenkins, two seconds on the Liberty Profile. Really, really fast and reactive. Tomcat, Glassfish, Jetty, Jobos. Anything from three to five seconds for Pet Clinic. Anything from eight to 13 seconds. So substantially, orders, orders slower than the Liberty Profile. Now why is this? What's the Liberty Profile doing that is so lightning fast? Well, it's a case of what they're not doing. Um, what they're actually doing is they're, is, they're, is they're having a lazy initialization. The reason they're so lightning fast on the, on the, previous, the previous tests is because they're doing their initialization on the first invocation, not on when you actually deploy it. So when you deploy your application, it just sits there and goes, yeah, all right, yeah, I'll leave it there for later. Um, when you actually invoke it, then you'll see, ah, a startup with your application and an invocation, 10 seconds. Tomcat, seven and a half. Glassfish, 11. Jetty, 12. Jboss, eight. We're looking at something that's a lot, lot closer to the others. Uh, startup time with Jenkins. Liberty profile now, 25 seconds. Everything else, much, much quicker. So I, I, I showed this to my colleagues at IBM and they said, ah, yes, yes, interesting. <laughs> uh, they tried it with version 8.5.1 and 8.5.5, which they know they have pushed a lot of performance fixes in. And don't forget, the Liberty Profile is a very new product, okay? It's amazing, absolutely incredible what they've done. And I take my hat off to the, to the people who are designing the Liberty Profile, because they're not, they're not writing things from scratch. They're using the same IBM WebSphere containers, the same web container, the same um, transaction server, and they're pulling it into this lightweight version. Um, but yeah, it is still new. So, so they've pushed a lot of performance fixes in. Um, you can actually do a lot of this initialization earlier. Um, it does make it a little bit quicker for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's still, it's still quite slow. So this is actually unordered. Tomcat is the winner. Uh, Glassfish and JBoss, very, very good. D despite, their, despite their size, not too far off Tomcat. Uh, Jetty, for me, is the big surprise here. 
I, I was expecting Jetty to either come first, joint first, or very, very close to first. Um, we got some feedback from the Jetty guys, the Jetty team, or some of the committers from Jetty, and, and they were actually not as surprised as we were uh, that its performance had dropped. They're talking about a lot of code that's been added recently with um, is it web tide and things like that. Uh, Liberty profile losing a little bit, but um, with some of the new performance metrics that they're, that they're showing, it's not actually that far behind now. Uh, I haven't tested them, so I, I haven't been able to update my numbers. Okay, features. So when we talk about features, uh, we're talking about three things. Big Java, Little Java, and OSGI. So we're talking about full Java EE compliance, web profile compliance, or OSGI applications. And a lot of people, a lot of app servers are actually you know, pulling in OSGI applications these days. But you shouldn't just say, oh, okay, let's use this one because it's got everything, everything I need for the next 10 years, right? It's, it's not about having something that is so awesome that it does everything. It's about doing something that is suitable for your needs, right? And this is, again, thinking about the app-centric approach. If my application does this, why do I need everything else? Okay. Um, who's heard of Apache Tommy? Wow, you should get a, you should get a, a session on Apache Tommy here. We had. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know no one went to it. Right. Um, what what is Apache Tommy? Typically, Tomcat users. Uh, very very often, Tomcat is not enough. So you'll say, okay, I, this Tomcat's great, but I want OpenEJB. I want OpenJPA. I, I want all these extra things that I'm gonna that I'm gonna staple on to the side of Tomcat so that I can deploy my application and make use of these other, other things which these additional um, libraries and these additional plugins will, will give me. What Apache Tommy does is it's an open source project, uh, obviously Apache, and, and it provides you with a pre-built version of Tomcat with everything you would need to, uh, up to the web profile standard. And it provides this out the box so you don't need to maintain all the bits and bobs that you need to attach to it. That glue code and everything else that you need to provide that environment is already done for you. Uh, there's a guy far cleverer than me um, called David Blevins, who is one of the really big contributors and drivers of Apache Tommy. If you haven't heard of it and you're interested, just quickly Google uh, Tommy or David Blevins and you can see one of his talks. He's a really good speaker as well. Um, and, and, and he'll give you a really good overview of Apache Tommy. Um, he's also doing some support for Apache Tommy, so it's not you're not by yourself with it. Um, Tommy Tribe is his is his company, and he, he'll provide uh, support for that. So features versus compatibility. So JBoss and, uh, and Glass, which are giving the all singing, all dancing, full J2E support, uh, full OSGI application support. So your your actual applications can consist of many different bundles which you can add to or remove to. Uh, Liberty Profile at the time was just under the web profile um, uh, compliance, but it has since in version 8.55 added um, new support for, for the, web e, uh, the web profile standards. Simon, can you go back to the Apache Tommy uh, slide so I can show it to... Yeah, and you in front? <laughs> Uh, Tomcat is, is pretty much just web container, JSP container, right? Uh, there are some other things, but, but typically if you wanted more, you can do a whole bunch of additions to Tomcat and you can do, and you can use Tommy if you wanted something more substantial, more packaged and more rounded. Uh, Jetty, again, very, very similar to Tomcat. It's, it's very minimalistic when it comes to its features. There is something with uh, Jetty, I think it's called WebTide, uh, which does provide a lot more support. And I think uh, that's actually um, dropping in a standard with, uh, with Jetty version 9. Okay, admin and management. How am I doing for time? I'll better speed up. Admin and management. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, you can see the Jetty admin console, and on the right hand side you see the Tomcat admin console. Uh, 
don't, don't be confused by this mark, it's, it's not an admin console. Um, so, so with Jetty, everything is scripted, right? You, there isn't an admin console, there isn't a web app that you can, that you can have out the box uh, to config your, your Jetty server. With Tomcat, you do have an admin console, but it is very, very minimalistic. If you want to deploy your app, remove your app, start your app server, and things like that, you can do it. But if you want to go into the nitty gritty of your, of your server and make changes to your server, you, you know, that, that's not possible. You can view some of, the, some of the parts of your server. I think you can view things like your JVM arguments and, and things like that, but you can't make changes. When we talk about the more vendor-specific servers, here we have JBoss on the left and Glassfish on the right. What we can see, because it's pushed by Red Hat and by Oracle, I mean, when I worked at IBM, when we introduced features into the, into the application server, everything you do, every work item you work on, it's got to be, it's got to be, if you want to make changes, you've got to provide scripting support. You've got you've to provide support for, um, for accessing it and changing it in your admin console. Right? These are all things which vendors take very, very seriously. So for both JBoss and Glassfish, you, you do have all singing, all dancing uh, admin consoles. If you want to make a change, there will be a place in this, in this maze of, of kind of uh, links. You, there will be a place where you can make those changes. And, and typically, with these kind of app servers, um, you, might be, you might be better off actually going through the admin console rather than playing with, uh, playing with the XML. Now the Liberty Profile is different. Uh, the Liberty Profile provides you with, this is, this is actually a screenshot from Eclipse. So in the same way in, in Java EE, you would have a deployment descriptor, um, which, you, which you have a nice, um, rich editor to, 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 to make your changes. This is exactly the same, where you have a design tab and a source tab. Your source tab, on the bottom here, will, will allow you to see the full XML. Whereas your design tab will actually give you a kind of GUI interface. And here we have a feature manager, so if I were to click on that and hit add, I can add a new feature to my server. So this could be JSP support, JNDI support, and so on. Um, and, and anything is really configurable in here. You can make your changes to your JVC drivers, you can add JNDI, data sources, or whatever, whatever you would want from, from here. There are some drawbacks, though. Um, the fact that it's an Eclipse is awesome, because it's in your development environment if you use Eclipse. If you don't use Eclipse, and you don't want to use Eclipse, well, you don't have access to this. Also, if it's a remote server, uh, you can't have it managed by Eclipse. So as a result, you can't have any of this. So the fact that you can't do a lot of those things um, means the admin console is only available in certain, in certain times. So, JBoss and Glassfish, uh, both kind of top marks. JBoss does have a, a, a lot of... Um, a lot, well, it does have a lot of the function, it has all the function uh, that, that, that Glassfish does. Um, we didn't like the look and feel of JBoss too much, we thought it reminded us of like the 1970s. Um, so, so we couldn't give anything from the 1970s 5 out of 5. So, so we, we dropped that very slightly because we thought the look and feel of Glassfish was much nicer. Uh, Liberty Profile dropped some points because of the, the, different, the different supports that it, that it doesn't handle. Tomcat... Um, Really, if you wanted to do anything, anything that important, you'd really want to go either the scripting route or the or the XML route. And Jetty, you know, all, all bets are off. You go via scripting or you go via direct to the XML. Uh, costs and licensing. The great thing is, for developers, everything's free. Okay. In the words of uh, some of the guys from a local uh, analyst company in London, Redmonk. Developers, developers, developers. Developers are the new kingmakers. Developers are very, very important. They make a lot of the decision-making um, calls in businesses today. That's in the UK, not in France. In, in the UK, not in France, no? <laughs> okay. Uh, it's really important to get these app servers, to get your software into the hands of developers. So as a result, the ease of doing this is, 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 is known to everyone. So... It's, it's free. Uh, commercial support, you do get commercial support in some, so if, you, if you're using JBoss you have to jump to EAP, uh, Oracle, uh, yeah, I'll talk about that later, uh, Libby Profile, yes. Uh, there are some costs involved as soon as you move to production. Oh my god, 
Oracle have recently removed commercial support from Glassfish. Really, really big shame. Um, does it mean that Glassfish is dead? Of course it doesn't mean Glassfish is dead. It means Glassfish Oracle support is dead. There are going to be many sponsors out there that do care about Glassfish enough to, to, to put some weight behind it, to put their committers behind it. There are going to be many, many, um, there are going to be uh, many, many sponsors out there uh, that are going to add com commercial support. Okay, think about Tomcat. Think about Jetty. They're doing just fine without a com without a, a commercial sponsor, right? There are going to be plenty of people that are going to yes. Early days. <laughs> it's, it's early days. I mean, there, there are there are some licensing issues right now that are stopping people from easily committing. Um, but given that this given that this news is still very very still quite wet, nothing's dried yet. It, it's I think it's early days. I'm really hoping that that the Glassfish code has a license. Will have a license that will allow committing and allow contributions. Uh, to be made, hopefully in the future. But yeah, those problems are problems that currently exist. Yeah. So, cost and licensing. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I read Do you want to talk about that? At the restaurant later. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that after. <laughs> but, but it was interesting that that one of the I think when Oracle bought Sun, one of the conditions was that they actually kept Glassfish alive. But I, but I guess there was a time limit on that. Um, Glassfish is still the reference implementation of Java EE. How long that lasts for? I don't know. I really hope it lasts longer. Maybe Tommy e would be a better reference implementation for Java EE. But but currently, Glassfish is still the place where new. Uh, Java EE implementations would go as the reference implementation. But I think we have only just scratched that story. I think there is a lot to unfold over the next year. We'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so Jetty, Tomcat, awesome licenses. Everything's awesome. Glassfish, pretty awesome, but this was written a long time ago. Um, Liberty Profile, uh, yeah, there's a lot of licensing information there. Um, from a development point of view, it's free, so that's good. Um, JBoss, equally. Ignore me, there's an elephant in the room. Does, that, does, does anyone understand that there's an elephant in the room? I'm going to take this out of my slides from when I travel. <laughs> this, this must be a British phrase. It, it means there's something massive in the room and we're ignoring it. We're trying our best to ignore it. Um, so this means ignore me. We haven't talked about WebSphere, we haven't talked about WebLogic. Um, WebLogic, I was actually really, really impressed with. Um, I go to download it, and I'm not downloading one gig's worth of production-ready um, uh, server. I'm actually downloading a three, I think it's about 300 meg now, a 300 meg development environment. And it's not that slow, it's not, it's not what you'd expect. Then I go to WebSphere, I go to the IBM site, um, I, I, I look for my download, and I thought, awesome, WebSphere, one gig. Uh, and then I read part one of three. <laughs> and so you download it, it's a three gig download. The only difference between WebSphere for developers and WebSphere uh, full product, the one that you actually put in production, is simply the licensing. That's the only difference. So you're actually running the same bytecode in your development environment on your, on your, your, uh, your Lenovo machine that hasn't been upgraded for four years, that you would normally you know, run this same product on your on your mainframe server. Um, so as a result, it, it, it's it's very very focused to um, to to production, not development. Whereas WebLogic um, seems to have done much much nicer uh, job in, in in making it available. I'm going to move on because I think we're going to be kicked out soon. So the results. These are all the results: uh, Liberty Profile, Tomcat, Glassfish, Jetty, JBoss. We add them all up. We total them here. We draw a pretty graph. JBoss, Glassfish, and Tomcat, very, very close. Uh, Liberty Profile, not quite there yet. Jetty, really, really surprising uh, that, that, it's, uh, that it's dropped that low. But with all the metrics that we've talked about, we're weighting them equally. And that's not what you really care about. There are specific things in there which you care about, and there are specific things that you just 
don't give a shit about. You know, these, these are things that are there. Yes, it might be good, it might be bad, but I might not do it very often. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what's important to you in this room. So you're going to have, we're going to say high, medium, and low on every single one of these metrics, and we're going to weight the scores based on, based on that. If it's low, we multiply everything by zero. If it's medium, we multiply the scores by one. If it's high, we multiply the scores by two. So, we'll start off with download and installation. Um, is, this, is this important to you? Is it important to you how easy it is to download, how easy it is to unzip or install, or how easy it is to get started? It's gonna be a first time hit. Who thinks it's high? Medium? Low? Okay, so it's about split, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it as medium. Tooling support. Is it important to you that when you make your application server choice, you then have to switch your IDE? Is it important that your tooling gives you enough, uh, enough um, flexibility to start, stop your server from scripting or to actually download and install uh, through your tooling? Anyone for high? That's high. <laughs> Server configuration. So this is about how big your XML files are, how easy it is to make a change, and how reactive your server is when you make that change. Uh, everyone for high, medium, and low. Yeah, that's, I'm going to put medium on that one. Performance metrics. How important is it to you that your, when, when you make your changes, that your server starts up quickly, every time you make a change, that it deploys quickly, that it initializes quickly. Uh, highs. I. Features and open standards. So I guess how um, how dependent is your application on being on and being in a J2EE compliant <coughs> server or having OSGI? Is it is it good enough to be is it good enough to run your application in a web profile or or even less than that? Highs. So highs are the highs. Mr. J.E. over there. <laughs> highs are the more, the, the, um, the more support, the more features, and low is the fewer features. So high, medium, and low. Okay, I'll put that as uh, low, only just. Documentation and community. Is it important that you have good docs? Is it important that you have a big community for when things go wrong? High? High. Uh, admin and management UI. So I guess this is important if you, if you, when you make your changes, you use an admin console, a GUI, rather than going to the XML. So is it important for you uh, to, to have this highs, mediums, and lows? Yeah, all developers. <laughs> Hackers. Uh, cost and licensing. Is it important to you, for you to have a, a really awesome Apache 2 license and to have everything free for development? Or do you not care? Is that something that you just leave your company to do? Highs, mediums, and lows. Okay, so that's high. So then we come over here. Oh, okay. I can see why so many of you put your hands up for Tomcat. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is the ranking. Now this is this is your preferences. So what we're seeing is the very top one is Tomcat out of 48. Uh, JBoss and Glassfish um, third and second. So so Glassfish next. Uh, JBoss next. I've never actually seen a, a gap this wide actually when I've done this presentation. Um, then the Liberty Profile and Jetty. Uh, Jetty just overtaking there. So actually uh, this is actually quite a clear cut one. Uh, normally it's a lot lot closer. So Tomcat uh, for those requirements and our scores is the most popular. Go Tomcat. <laughs> so Rebel Labs is awesome. A whole load of tech reports written by me and our developers. Uh, if you want more information about this, we go into a lot more depth. Um, there's a huge number of different things like Java 8, continuous delivery, JVM languages, web frameworks. I'll send out a whole load of links to any of these which I might consider interesting at the time. And of course, the great application serve debate, which is, which is this one talked about that. Follow me. <laughs> there we go.